So let's start off by talking about a few statistics here. Again, this presentation is about video marketing, and we have our two Ajax video ninjas here. So why is video marketing so important? Almost 52% of customers who watch product videos say that those videos make them more confident about purchases. Video results on search engines have a 41% higher click-through rate than plain text search results. Site visitors who view product vid vis uh, videos are 144% more likely to add that product to their cart. And finally, professionally produced videos outperform user-generated user videos by 30%. So now that we know a little bit about the stats behind video marketing, where do we get started? How do we make a video? And once we've made that video, how do we market it? And how do we tell the public about it? Spencer, I'm going to direct this over to you. Uh, thanks, Al. All right, so um, maybe you're thinking about doing videos for your website or for your business. Maybe you're already making some and you want to make them more professional. Or maybe you want to hire somebody like Ajax Union. You're a little more interested in the process that goes into making these videos. So I'm going to run through you that now. And when we talk about um, video production, there are three steps that we like to go through. And uh, if we can go to the next slide, I'll show you those. So the three steps to production are pre-production, production, and post-production. If you stick to these steps um, and, th and this workflow, you definitely get a much more polished and uh, professional project, and it keeps you much more organized and you know what you're doing. Some of this might be new to you guys, some of them might be not, but just to give you a little bit of insight in what goes into these types of things. So pre-production, this is, I consider, the most important phase um, in the entire process. It's more than just writing the script and coming up with an idea. Yes, that is part of it, but it is gathering it all together. This is really where the video is make or break. Um, it's also pretty neglected. You know, some people just like to come an idea, write a script, and then go out shooting. It's not exactly like that. You should pretty much have everything planned down to the T in this phase, down to every single shot you're going to use, everything that's going to be done. So when then it gets to the production phase, you are 100% confident. You should already know exactly what's going to happen, and so should everybody else in the crew. Um, the production, this is the fun part. This is the one everybody thinks of when I think of video production. This is the actual what's going on uh, when the cameras are rolling, and I actually consider this to be the quickest and the most fun part. Um, and that's only so if you've taken the necessary, st necessary steps in pre-production. Otherwise, you might uh, get caught pulling your hair out. And then lastly, there is the post-production phase. This is actually the longest phase of the project. And now that you have all this footage, um, you have all your elements shot and ready, now you've actually got to put them together and make a cohesive and polished piece. That includes editing the video in something like Final Cut Express or Avid or Adobe Premiere, um, adding in sound effects and certain graphics with either After Effects or you can use um, stock graphics from certain websites. And even those little things can really make a much more um, polished and professional looking version of your video. All right, so pre-production, uh, getting your act together. And what exactly are the steps that go into pre-production? Well, first, once you have your idea for a video, you have your concept, it has to have a purpose. What is the goal of this video? Do you want to showcase your company as a whole? Maybe you just want to have something online that says, this is our company, this is who I are, this is who we are, in a broad sense, this is what we do. Or maybe you want something much more specific. Uh, maybe you just want to highlight a new product you guys have come out with. Maybe you just want to do a funny web ad. Understand your purpose and stick to that. Otherwise, videos tend to be a little too long and unfocused um, if they stray away from that. And who's your audience, too? Who's your customer? You know, if you're selling skateboards, you probably want to make something funny and a little more hip. If you're selling, you know, medical supplies, you probably want sometimes it may be different tones. So know your audience and uh, know what they would like to see. And as far, know your limitations too. What is your experience in video production? Uh, do you have people there who know what you're, they are doing? Or is this your first time really doing anything? 
Uh, if it is your first time, keep it simple. Don't go over your head. Don't try to do crazy things. It might be just something as simple as a question and answer session with the head of your company if you've never done any video production. Because if you try to go way over your head, um, the quality could look poor. And it might actually, you know, you might be defeating the purpose of the whole video itself. And know your budget as well. Um, and then you want to get together a shot sheet and a storyboard. This is different than a script. Once you have your script together, you actually want to take your script and you basically want to draw a picture that represents what's going on on screen during every phase or every line in your script. And you want to mark it, you have to say these are the shots we need, you just want to go in there and just start rolling the camera. You want to go into the production phase and knowing exactly what you're shooting, what angles you're shooting from, uh, what you're doing, and if you keep that checklist in mind, uh, it's going to be organized and it's going to be a lot easier and it's going to show up in the end. All right. So also in the pre-production phase, you know, this is gathering your tools. When it comes to location, make sure your location is practical and that it have you know, enough time to shoot there. You don't want to be rushed. If you're going somewhere outside um, of your control, you want to make sure you have ample time to get your production done and be realistic because shoots take much longer than you think. Um, and is it practical? Start thinking about things. What's the lighting like in that location? Does this make sense for my video? How does it sound when I'm in the room? Is it echoey? Um, you know, things like that are good to keep in mind. Is it interesting? Are there good things in the background? Um, equipment. You really have to know what lights, camera, and audio equipment you're going to need. You're always going to need more lights than you think. Um, get a decent camera, you get what you pay for, usually in terms of camera, and you have to get the necessary audio equipment. Don't rely on your camera's onboard microphone. Crew and talent, you're going to need more people than you think. That's just the way it is. It's very hard um, to do one-man projects unless you completely know what you're doing and the, the video is very, very simple. Um, make sure everybody's informed to know what they're doing. This is where the storyboard comes in handy. You want everybody to know what the finished product is supposed to look like. And when it comes to talent, get somebody, if you're not hiring a professional actor and you're just getting someone from your company to be in these videos, get someone who's comfortable on camera. And trust me, that's a lot harder than you actually think. Because if they're uncomfortable or it just doesn't sound natural on screen, it's going to show. Okay, and then when it actually comes time to making the video, hopefully you've done all your pre-production homework, uh, these are some things you want to make sure of during the production phase. Like I said, I...
always do more. And save the footage as you go. If you're taking a break on set, dump the footage and back it up onto a computer. When you're completely done with a pro project, back up your footage. Uh, we've all made this mistake in college, anybody who's been involved in video production. There is nothing in the world more painful as finishing a whole project and then all of a sudden your footage disappears somehow. The computer eats it. You forgot to upload something. So double and triple check it because that can ruin a whole project very quickly. And then um, websites that offer stock video footage, stock graphics, and um, stock pictures can really enhance the look of your video. Maybe you're making a video but you want to add little graphics like a little intro, some lower thirds, things that can really uh, bump up the look of it but you don't know how to. Sites like videoblocks.com or Shutterstock offer these things for you. You can either get a subscription or you can just pay for one thing at a time. Um, that can give you some things you need. Um, also in the editing phase when you go to put your footage on a timeline during the finished video make sure all of your audio is consistent. Um, in some amateur products, projects, the uh, audio at the beginning will be a certain level and then in the second half uh, the user has to turn up the volume because the second half of the video is much quieter. So those are like little things you want to look out for. So when you're done, you watch your video, you want to say like, could this go on TV or what makes this look amateurish and see if you can try to fix that. And so yeah, those are the types of things in production that we look out for here and you should look out for yourself. So go make videos. Perfect, Spencer, thank you so much. Um, and now we're gonna talk a little bit about video distribution. So once you have your video, what do you do with it? Um, and Meg, our video marketing um, manager is gonna discuss how best to do this. Yep, uh, great. So as with anything on the internet, um, you can create great content, but if you don't do anything with it, nobody's going to see it. It's not like having a physical storefront where somebody will just walk by. You're going to need to find a way to put all that information out there for your audience to see. So first, and sometimes the often most neglected uh, place that you can put your video is right on your website itself. Uh, statistically, having videos on your site improves conversion rates dramatically. Whether you want somebody to fill a form on your website or sign up for a newsletter or buy a product, uh, having a video there, especially a really great looking professional video that's relevant uh, can definitely take a customer from interested in your business to super very definitely interested. <laughs> um, and you know where you put it on your website is definitely going to depend on what kind of video it is. If it's something just about your company in general, maybe it can go on your home page. You know, a specific product video can go on its own product page where people can see it as they're shopping. And maybe you have a video about, you know, a get to know us kind of video about people who work in your office. That might be great for the About Us page. Um, just make sure that, you know, you're putting the video on, some, on a page that it's appropriate for. Having an individual product video on the wrong product page is definitely not going to help anything. And in fact, people might, you know, turn away from your site just because they see something like that and they don't think that you know what you're doing. Specifically on along the lines of product videos, um, Product videos can be a great tool. They do need to serve a purpose, though. You can't just have a random video on your product pages and expect people to watch it and to put the product right in their cart. So there's a lot of benefits to having these kind of videos. Uh, for example, it gives you more views and angles of a product. You can show people you know, a lot more than just a few photos if you have a video showing the product. If it's something that people might not know how to use or they might not be 100% sure what it is exactly, this is definitely another great place to incorporate a video, showing maybe somebody using it or having somebody explain why somebody might need it, like a mini commercial almost, just on the product page. And finally, if it's something that people know what it is, but they don't know why they should buy it from you, testimonials and reviews can really go a long way. And these don't have to be you know, going to a customer and filming a customer at their house. It can be something as simple as you know, text testimonials with audio behind them if it's something that you just want to you include, but you don't necessarily have the time and the budget right away to get people reading them aloud. Another great place to put your video is on a YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube is Google's video search engine, so uh, especially when it comes to things like SEO, this is going to be a great tool. And it's also, uh, YouTube itself is the second most popular search engine on the internet. So this is definitely somewhere that you're going to want your videos to be and you're going to want them to be available for people. 
So first step, get a YouTube channel. Um, there's a lot of new features with YouTube now for channels where you can really customize what your channel looks like, things like logos, company colors, uh, make sure that you link things back to your site and make sure that you link to, you know, if you have a Facebook page or if you have a Twitter, this is another great place to get people to go back to those other pages as well. And obviously upload your videos and if you're thinking of doing maybe like a video series or you have multiple videos about the same kind of topics like um, how-to videos or product showcases, making a playlist is definitely another great idea. Uh, you want to make sure that people get the information that they want and you're offering them something else too. So if they look for one specific product video, if it's in a playlist with other similar products, people are much more likely to then continue watching and see what else you have to offer. Um, YouTube itself, like I said, is the second largest search engine. Uh, so these tips are both for getting your video to appear higher in Google itself and within YouTube's own search results when somebody's searching on YouTube. And these are things that in general you should be including anywhere you put a video on the internet. And this is both for SEO and user experience. You want people to know what you're offering them by showing them this video. Uh, so the first thing is a video description. You should always include some keywords and a link back to your site, preferably on the first line so people can, you know, if they see the video and they like what they see, they know immediately how to get to where you are. Uh, something on the back end of YouTube that you can add is a video transcript. Basically, you're just putting in the text of what is being said in the video because YouTube doesn't, they don't transcribe your audio for you. So the video itself, YouTube doesn't know actually what you're saying. So by adding a transcript, you're just giving them more information about what your video has to offer people and what your video is saying. Um, and that can do wonders for getting better positions on YouTube itself. You can also tag your video with a few different keywords so that people can search for it a little easier based on, you know, different search terms that they might be interested in. And finally, this is the key to everything in internet marketing in general is that all this information isn't just, you know, for the back end of Google and YouTube and things like that. Humans are going to be reading this information. So don't just put a string of keywords in a row and don't just, you know, try to pad something that doesn't make any sense with hundreds of words that you want to appear for. You want to make sure that you're showing people that you're bringing value to their day if they watch your video and that there's something useful that they can learn or that they can gain from taking the time to see the content that you're providing. Uh, next place that is great to put your videos is any social media that you're using. Um, Facebook, and, you know, Facebook and Twitter are definitely you know, two of the biggest ones. Other places like Flickr and Vimeo, um, you know, Google, your Google Plus page, things like that. Those are all great places that you might already be using and now you're offering all those people who follow you on those sites, you're bringing them something new and different. So instead of just reading a text update or seeing a picture that you're posting, now they get even more great content from your business. And once again, don't forget to <laughs> add video descriptions, add some text when you're posting these things. Um, this way, you know, if somebody can't watch a video right away, which sometimes happens, you know, um, then they can say later, oh, but that video description, though, it's definitely something I want to watch, and then they'll come back and watch it later. If you just post a video and people don't have time for it right away, they don't know what it is. They're probably not going to come back, and then you just lost a potential opportunity. A new trend that, uh, I guess, in recent years has become pretty popular is video blogging. This is definitely great for building your brand and creating some regular content that your business can use, and especially if you already have a blog itself, you know, maybe you could swap out a one blog post a week could be something video related. And the great thing about video blogs is that there's so many different ideas that you can use and so many different ways you can really display information to people in a bit more of a casual way rather than super promotional because people are already on your blog and they know what, hopefully they know a little bit about what you're about. So it doesn't need to be a commercial every single time. Um, so some great ideas for video blogs that I put here, you know, product videos, how-to videos are great, you know, instructional videos so people can learn how to use a product or even how to use your website. If you think that people don't understand how your website works, it definitely wouldn't help, wouldn't hurt to uh, create some kind of a video that shows all the great ordering options that you have or, you know, your ex all the phone numbers that they can call to contact you. Like I said, commercials can be great on here as well and, you know, more creative and fun viral type videos. Um, it's really just a showing about who your business is and why people should be choosing your business over other, over other businesses. And one of the goals of video blogging is definitely generating engagement with your videos. 
you should be definitely encouraging comments, feedback, and when people do decide to send you a message or leave a comment on your video, make sure that you're following up because the idea is that you're trying to build customers. So you want to make sure that if somebody contacts you, that you're showing them that you're engaged as well and that you see what they're saying and you value what they're saying. One of the often neglected places that you can put video, uh, if you're running Google AdWords campaigns currently, um, you can also run video ads. And you may recognize video ads from YouTube and things like that. Um, you know, when you go to watch a YouTube video, there's sometimes ads right before the video, or I guess <laughs> more often recently, always an ad in front of the video. Um, they also appear at the top of search results or on the side of videos that you're watching. You can see promoted videos and things like that. And the great thing about these is, similar to a pay-per-click kind of campaign, you're only paying for these when somebody watches a certain amount of them. So you don't have to pay when the video appears, but you have to pay once people watch, I think the minimum is 30 seconds of your video or something like that. And this is great because you can really target exactly the right audience. So just like in a regular Google AdWords campaign, you can target people based on keywords or by topics and interests. You can put videos uh, of your business you know, in front of similar kind of things so that this way the people who would be most interested in your business are being given the opportunity to see your videos even if they don't know who you are. So maybe they're not coming to your social media yet and they're not coming to your video blog, but by putting all of your videos here, you're really giving them the opportunity to learn about you so they can engage you further. And finally, uh, I know we talked briefly already about a little bit about Vimeo and Flickr, but there's so many other sites out there that offer the opportunity for you to put your videos. Um, I guess one of the newest ones is if you have a Yelp page. Uh, you can put a video about your business on your Yelp page, on Yahoo and Bing local directories. Um, you know, you can have videos about your business. And you know, flip, like we said, Vimeo, Flickr, Dailymotion, those are all great places as well if you have, especially if you have multiple videos to create kind of collections for people to see what you're offering. Um, the biggest thing here is just using your best judgment. Um, similar to, you know, like link building for SEO and other things like that. Uh, trust your instincts. If it looks like a shady website and it looks like it's probably not somewhere that you would uh, trust a video on, you shouldn't put it there. It's probably not going to look good to search engines. It's not going to look good to your customers. There's no reason that you should be putting your video somewhere where it would be detrimental to your business. So, and finally, I know it's an option. Uh, don't buy views. Don't pay people to view your video, things like that. Um, I know there's different sites out there where you can purchase views on YouTube and things like that, um, but you know, all you need is one more update to like the Google algorithm or something when they start catching those kind of things and suddenly nothing you did counts anymore. So the best approach here is really to make sure you're picking places that people might actually want to see your video. So like your Yelp page or a directory listing for your business because that's the kind of place where it makes sense to have your video, but if you're just posting it on every website you come up against, it's probably not going to do any good for your business and it's probably not going to make your videos get any more views anyway. So. Uh, so if you have any questions about video in general or our plans, um, if you go to ajaxunion.com slash video, we've got more info about us, uh, what we offer. There's some samples of our work on there. Uh, we've been doing some excellent work lately. And if you have any questions directly, definitely don't hesitate to email video at Ajax Union. Myself and Spencer would be happy to answer any really super specific questions or you know, if you need some advice about how you might want to move forward with video marketing, we'd be happy to help. Um, we love you know, consulting with people about different ideas and new plans. So. Take it away, Elle. Perfect. Thanks, Meg. Let's just move over to the next slide. Um, so as Spencer mentioned, one of the things that video marketing is great for is branding. Um, and I guess as a shameless plug, we're going to toss in GrowTime. Spencer is actually our head videographer on GrowTime, which is a series dedicated to business marketing and technology, where our CEO, Joe Apfelbaum, talks about these three subjects in short, three minute long videos. So if you're interested in creating something similar for your business or if you want to start with video but aren't sure where to start, where, where to begin, um, check out growtime.tv. Joe gives a lot of great business tips um, both regarding and pertaining to video and just business strategies and development issues in general. So growtime.tv, we have a new video that comes out every single Thursday at noon. You just missed the cutoff but uh, we have a video that came out today 
hopefully it's very exciting. It's about WordPress, um, and we'd love to see you watch it. Joe encourages everyone to comment, like it, and we do give away prizes as well to everyone who comments. So we thought it'd be a great thing to mention in our video marketing webinar. Moving right along, we have a special bonus for everyone in the crowd today. We're so grateful and so thankful that you took out some time today and allotted um, your own busy schedules to learn about video marketing with us. So as a special bonus, we're giving away discounted seminar tickets. We have a B2B marketing seminar coming up on May 7th at 6 p.m. It's going to be at the New Yorker Hotel, and our president, Zevi Friedman, and CEO, Joe Applebaum, are going to teach B2B marketing methods, including video marketing, Google AdWords, SEO, social media, email marketing, press releases, reputation management, all the good things. So we're very excited about it. And as a thank you for you guys sitting in on our webinar, we're going to give you guys 30% off tickets. If you visit ajaxunion.com slash events, or if you want to go straight to the website, the site is ajaxb2bmarketing.eventbrite.com. The special code that you use is 30webinar507, and that will give you 30% off these tickets. Tickets right now are going for $50. But again, we definitely want to thank everyone for joining us today and for, uh, for learning about video marketing with us. So as a special added bonus, feel free to grab a ticket. We really think you'll learn a lot, and this is a great way to really interact and learn with us in person, both about video marketing and a lot of the other in-house marketing strategies that we do offer. Um, and now I encourage everyone to, to ask questions. We have our video department and video production team standing, waiting to answer them. Um, I see a few questions rolling in, so I'm going to toss those over to Megan Spencer. And if you have any questions yourself, feel free to type them into the chat box, and I will get those answered for you as well. So Megan, I think the first question here is for you. Um, let me see right here. How many videos should my business be putting out? Uh, sure. So I guess it really, you know, obviously no situation is unique, but uh, it depends on what you're offering and what your business does. I think, you know, every company can benefit from having just a general company video about, you know, your business and what you do. And beyond that, you know, if you, it depends on how much you want to showcase. If you want to talk about um, maybe you're offering a new service, maybe that's the time to come out with a new video is about your new service you're offering. Or, you know, if you sell a lot of products, maybe some of your larger products that you really want people to purchase, um, you could have some shorter, smaller videos about all the different products that you offer along those lines. Um, it's really definitely an individual situation, but um, there's, no, there's no real set schedule. It's just whatever information you think people will actually find value in. So don't just put out a video because you think you need one, you sh because you think that, you know, I have to put out video, I have to have video online. You have to make sure that you're definitely giving people information and that you're offering value to them. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Meg, I see another question for you rolling in. And I think this is a very popular question that some of our uh, companies would be asking. I have a service business without products. What types of videos should I make? Great. Um, you know, we, have, we definitely have a lot of businesses we've worked with in terms of video that aren't product-based businesses. So, you know, we're not going to be creating product videos for that kind of thing. But um, I found that, you know, testimonial videos and things like that do work really well for service businesses, especially if um, you're highlighting what makes your business unique along, you know, that same service. If you have different testimonials about your customer service or you have testimonials about, you know, how your prices are so great compared to everybody else, um, I would definitely consider those kind of videos, as well as related topic how-to videos and instructional videos. Um, so, you know, if you maybe do insulation, for, for uh, homes and businesses. You could also do other videos about other ways to save money on energy bills or things like that because that's also along the same lines of what people would be searching for you for and this way you're giving them something additional beyond just promoting your company. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Spencer, I see a question for you over here. Um, what kind of video camera should I buy to shoot my own web videos? Um, uh, that's, I mean, it's a huge range of videos, and it really depends on what you're willing to spend. If it's just a simple type of web video, maybe you just want to do, like, some sort of question and answer thing, any video camera that you can buy um, for the consumer that shoots in HD, um, so if you want to see if it shoots in 720 or uh, 1080 is usually optimal, anything HD will really do if it's just a simple uh, web video. If you want to do something a little more advanced. Uh, there's a lot of research online, um, so it really depends, but if it's just something simple for the web, I wouldn't go too crazy. Just as long as it shoots in HD footage, you should be all set. 
Perfect. And Spencer, one more question over here. I want to film an hour-long training seminar. Do you think that I can shoot that with my flip cam? Um, that, no, I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, you could, but if you're doing an hour-long training session, flip cams, they're not as reliable. You know, it could cut out. Um, generally, I doubt you would get very good audio. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to hear what's being said very well, especially if it's in some sort of big room, um, unless it's, like, right next to the uh, presenter. I mean, you could technically, yes, but the quality, I doubt someone would want to sit through such a long um, presentation on something that's not as, like, quality or might have, like, sketchy audio. Mm -hmm. so. per Perfect. Thank you. And, Meg, I see another question rolling in for you. Do you know any good tools to create animation videos? Um, I guess it depends on your knowledge of, uh, you know, animation itself. Um, e We've used a number of different products from like the Adobe Suite and the Office to do to create our own animations from scratch. Um, but I do think you know if you don't really have the knowledge to back it up just yet and you want to learn, um, you could always start with like Spencer mentioned before different stock animation and you know video sites. They actually do really you know there are lots of great options if you're not quite sure, and you can still get something that looks professional um, while you're learning. But I know in the office we use things like you know Adobe After Effects and you know all sorts of products like that, and those can definitely give you some great options if you want to learn more about how to do it yourself and how to really uh, grow from there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. And an interesting question here that I get asked all the time, is it worth the cost to hire someone to create my videos? Yes. Yes, it is. Thanks, <laughs> Spencer, both you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying specifically. this. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely not saying this in terms of a promotional way, but, you know, it it can make a big difference if you have the budget to spend on it to you know hire a professional um, not only to save yourself the headache but just um, there's a lot more options available to you then if you hire somebody who knows what they're doing there's you know maybe a more professional script there's better graphics involved um, they probably already have the equipment that you'd need if you're you know hiring them to do a job so I guess it takes away a lot of the headache that you might be having to deal with yourself um, you know, if it's something you're interested in learning more about on your own, then maybe you don't want to hire somebody, you want to try it out. But I definitely think if you want to jump right into it and start going full speed, it's definitely worth the money to hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'll jump in on that too as well. Um, like I said, that's why I did a little bit on the production side of videos, is because sometimes if you want to make something that looks quality and professional, some people don't really understand uh, the amount of work or certain steps that go into it. Uh, even just like little things that you just might even not think about. And if you want to even if you don't have the equipment and you want to rent stuff that's almost just as expensive as hiring someone to do it yourself so unless you already have the equipment and are very knowledgeable on what to do I would probably seek um, you know hiring it out it just comes up with such a much uh, better product perfect thank you Spencer thanks Meg uh, one more question for Megan regarding SEO that's search engine optimization and video does the text non tags in a YouTube description affect its SEO? It does to a point. Um, you know, obviously since it's a video and Google Google and YouTube and the, all the search engines can't watch the video, um, the description is definitely a, a big part of what they can, what what they see your video as being about. Um, it, it isn't this, I think that there is a character limit, um, so if you're going to write 10 pages, it's not going to count all 10 pages. But the, you know, in the beginning of the description, you definitely should have it should be concise and it should include some keywords and it should be right to the point so that if your video is being crawled by a search engine that they know what it's about. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, adding a transcript can also be really great there too. If you have a lot of text content in the video, definitely add a transcript. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, last question I see here is, will you be posting slides to this video? Yes, we absolutely will. The slides to this presentation will be up on our blog. That's ajaxunion.com slash blog. They'll be up tomorrow afternoon about 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and I posted a link to our blog in the chat box as well for everyone to access. Otherwise, Meg and Spencer and everyone for joining us, whether it's your first time joining us today or your second, thank you so much. If you have any other questions about marketing, feel free to visit us online, www.ajaxunion.com. Otherwise, thanks for listening. Meg Spencer, thanks for the awesome presentation. We hope you learned something today. Thank you.